the electoral reform. reform please. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know that Bosnia-Herzegovina is very close to our heart and it's basically a neighbor and I'm very much involved also personally in discussions. I had discussions with many acting uh, personalities uh, in the Munich Sec uh, Security Conference and yes, the development we see is extremely worrisome. Um, one thing is for us a clear red line. The integrity of Bosnia-Herzegovina is not at the disposal. And we have to be very careful that Bosnia-Herzegovina and the Balkans as such don't become a playground for actors outside the European Union, outside Europe. And here the European Union will definitely react very strongly. I believe the actions and announcements of Dodik and the Republika Srpska are extremely dangerous and uh, playing with the integrity of the state, and this is for us a no-go. Um, we will have a very open discussion today. Um, for me, an essential point is that we need a common united European Union answer to this issue. And that is what we, I will strive for today. Uh, out of these two problems, which both uh, kind of a provoke political crisis, on your opinion, which is worse? You mean electoral reform, electoral reform or...? Or, um, or secessionist tendencies from uh, Republic of Serbia? May I say this is a... Uh, I don't know for which media you ask, but this is a very Bosnian question. Both are necessary. <laughs> we need both. We need an electoral reform. One day we want to overcome Dayton. We want to move from Dayton to Brussels as a system. And we need electoral reform for that. Um, I believe that there has been progress uh, and that all actors are aware that they need to act now because we will have elections coming up. Um, but in the immediate, um, the actions of the Republika Srpska are more dangerous and uh, are challenging directly the integrity of the state to pull back of the justice, pull back from the army and the security forces. This is simply a no-brainer and a no-go. Sorry for being so blunt and so clear, but for us Austrians, this is a very important matter. And yes, we will, we will think very hard about what kind of reactions there will be. We already are withholding uh, very substantial funds and we will continue to do so. If, if Republika Srpska does not, has not showing an interest to keep the integrity of the state, then they will feel the consequences and they will definitely feel them. Minister, uh, experience show that, uh, experience show that uh, uh, sanction doesn't work, especially with Russia. Don't you think it's a time for the European to start looking for a different solution out of the box, especially that we're talking here about war, not about something else? Well, I mean, you're aware that the, the diplomatic instruments are limited and the alternative is what if there's not, if there's dialogue, trying to find solutions through negotiations, then sanctions, and the, what is the last option? A military confrontation? I don't believe we want to contemplate that. So yes, sanctions sometimes do not work, but they do uh, to a certain degree and they really clearly show where we stand and they are painful. You cannot tell me that the sanctions on the Crimea are not uh, disruptive, have not been disruptive for Russia, and, uh, and we will go down this way again. And this time the package could be massive, and Russia is aware of that. But what is more important, having Ukraine in NATO or having a war will affect all the world? Um, I don't quite understand the question. I'm not in NATO mem member country, so for me this is not I mean, something... Why don't the European but start talking about... It's, it's, it's not the question about NATO and EU. It's the question that one state, a sovereign state, um, has to, the right to, to decide about his own fate. The people of Ukraine have the, the right to decide about uh, 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 their future security policy, and it's not for a third party to take a decision on their behalf. And that is a basic principle we have established after the final acts of Helsinki and after the fall of the Berlin Wall. And we have restated it again and again with the Russians. So there are many agreements with, which the Russians have ratified which state these principles. And that's the basic point. And we cannot stand by idly if a country believes that it can move borders by force in the 21st century on the European continent. It's as easy as that. Minister, what about the situation in Belarus? I, 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 if I may, I will move to the...